Hello everyone, I've seen a decent amount of confusion around some of the uh, Voron printer and extruder options and uh, I can understand that because there are a lot of options with the extruders and the printers themselves so I decided to make a quick video for uh, anyone new to the Voron environment about some of the choices you can make with the printers and the extruders but I want to say that all of these printers are good and they're good at what they do it just depends on your budget and uh, your needs so uh, yeah definitely choose based on that none of the options are bad I will mostly stick to the facts of these but I'm sure I'll have a few opinions here and there and all of those opinions will be my own I'm not related to the Voron development team or anything like that so again it's just me and one more thing before I begin uh, if you're watching this in the future, definitely check the date of the video because, uh, well, I'm recording this in late January 2021 by the time you're seeing this uh, it is possible that new printers are released or new extruders or, I don't know, things have changed the project moves fairly quickly, so if you're watching this in the future uh, I don't know how much value this video will be to you, but you know, we can still uh, stick around if you wish, I guess but definitely check their website as well to see what's new and what's not so so that's all I wanted to get out of the way I'll begin with the 3D printers themselves and I'll go from most expensive to cheapest just as a way of organizing them as I said they're all good and uh, yeah the first uh, printer in the list with that would be the Voron 2 or Voron 2.4 to be specific and uh, that's actually another point of confusion with the Voron printers I've noticed the V2 here isn't the uh, version 2 or anything like that. Think of it as a car brand, like BMW has 1 series, 3 series, 5 series. Uh, well, nowadays they even have series in between. So, uh, yeah, it's think of it as that way. Even though it's a V that doesn't stand for a version, it stands for Voron. And the version number is the one after the point. So, Voron, uh, Voron 2, version 4 is you can the way you can read it. So the Voron 2 is by far the most popular Voron printer out there. There are a few reasons for that, but it really is a big difference. So if you look at the Voron serial registry, you can see that the there is by far most of the serials issued are for the Voron 2, about two thirds of the total serials issued. So uh, yeah, this is definitely the most popular Voron out there, but it doesn't mean it's the best in every single application it's just is the biggest Voron out there and uh, yeah it's also the most expensive and people like to build the best they can so uh, yeah that's kind of the reason behind it so as I said this is the most expensive one it costs about fifteen hundred dollars based on what they say for v2.4 my v2.2 which is the previous version of the 2.4 they didn't have a 2.3 because they pulled a Microsoft and you know the way they skip Windows 9 but uh, my V2.2 which V2.2 was a little more expensive than 2.4 but uh, yeah my personal 2.2 cost me about two thousand dollars so uh, yeah the, the prices will vary depending on where you are and your part choices and especially with 2.4 it will vary even more because uh, with the Voron 2 series you have uh, three optional options for sizes 250, 300 and 350 square cubed so uh, yeah the parts will uh, part cost will change a lot based on that especially from the jump from 300 to 350 so uh, definitely don't take this 1500 as a definite figure but just something in the ballpark the Voron 2 is the has a few unique features so you can see that for example here the heat bed is mounted to the bottom of the 3d printer and the gantry itself uh, moves up and down, so maybe the gallery has better pictures of that so uh, yeah you can see it better here the advantage this has theoretically is one, the center of gravity of the 3D printer is much lower so you can, you can get rid of some of the resonance marks and two, again to get rid of resonance marks uh, unlike uh, Cartesian printers for the y-axis or the most of the Core XY printers for the z-axis the bed isn't moving and uh, you know the heat bed is actually a pretty heavy component so uh, that can create a lot of ringing marks in theory that is so 
this also gets rid of that uh, uh, to do that comes at a cost that's why this is the most expensive printer in the bunch uh, to move the entire gantry up and down there are four uh, linear rails and four motors in total and you need two MCUs etc so this is actually a complicated build much more complicated than most of the other uh, Vorons out there so I don't really recommend this if you don't have any 3D printing experience at all but if you do and if you want the best uh, printer Voron offers, well, this is it. But that being said, the Voron 1.8 isn't a uh, worse printer by uh, any really important way. It is slightly cheaper, about $1,000, and it is easier to build. It is a traditional Core XY design, so the gantry is fixed, and the entire heat pad moves up and down, just like, again, most uh, Core XY 3D printers. The print quality, based on what I've seen people print, I don't own a 1.8, but uh, it seems to be basically the same as the 2.4. So as I said, while the 2.4 has some theoretical advantages, in practice you don't really notice that. So uh, yeah, it's a more traditional Core XY design and it prints great, so you know this is an option you can choose if you don't want to spend 1500 or more for 2.4, this is only a thousand-ish dollars. Well, there are options for sizing of the 1.8 as well, and they are fairly large. They are not as large as the 2.4, so if you do need the build volume, the, your only option is the 2.4 if you want to build a Voron. The Voron 1 series used to have a gantry that was based on linear rods, so this is the 1.6, again they skipped 1.7. But with the 1.8, they switched to the pretty much the same gantry as the Voron 2.4. So uh, yeah, you can see that it's basically the same gantry here. But apparently, some people wanted the linear rod option as well. So now we have the Voron Legacy here. So again, this is pretty much uh, the same idea as the older 1.6 and previous Vorons, it's going all the way back to the first Voron. But uh, yeah, it's uh, refined a bit for the modern. 3D printing style and as far as I can tell, again I haven't built this but the, end, the bat mechanism is the same as 1.8 which basically was the same as 1.6 as well. So yeah, if you prefer uh, linear rods, this is an option you can choose. It is cheaper at around $800. This is the newest Voron out there and yeah, you can see that only 5 is issued as a result. Um, I'm sure that number will grow fairly quickly because as I said this is the newest one and sourcing parts take some time. As a result I don't know about its print quality but as I really don't expect it to be any worse so uh, yeah if you're interested in that you can build this. This is also cheaper at around $800 so if you can't spare the last $200 this is also a good option to build. From that we have the Voron switch wire, and I don't think this picture really shows it, what it is, so I'll open this one. So here it is, this is the only bed flinger the Voron uh, design team made so far, and it's not a Core XY design obviously, but instead it's a Core XZ. So this printer is really unique at that, there aren't many Core XZ printers out there, but this is Core XZ theoretically allows for much faster Z hop speeds. This also uses uh, really com common parts, so the heat pad here, for example, is a standard 24 volt Prusa heat pad instead of the usual AC powered large heat pads we use with the silicon heater mat. So uh, yeah, th there are a lot of common parts in this, and this is the easiest build based on what I read. So uh, yeah, if you already have spare parts and I don't know if you prefer uh, bed flingers for some reason because it's also the easiest to work with. For example, you can just easily swap the extruder part of the afterburner. I'll get to what that is, and you can just use two Bowden extruders very easily mounted at the top of the printer. I think Nero did that, and uh, yeah, it's the, as I said the easiest thing to work with. So easiest Voron to work with, so if you're interested in that, you can build this. The cost of this varies a decent amount, like the way Voron 2.4 varies, but not because of size, but because of part choices and uh, if you choose to build the enclosure or not. So you can see that, like the rest of the Voron printers, this is fully enclosable, but uh, yeah, enclosing a 
pet flinger requires a large enclosure so it is more costly plus their cost will vary depending on how many of the parts you already have uh, like I said the heat pad is Prusa but another thing I forgot to mention the linear rails on this are MGM 12s again the most common size for 3D printers on the Warham 2.4, 1.8 and uh, yeah only those two it is MGM 9s and the Warham 0 it's MGM 7s so they are not common at all the MGM 12s are actually pretty common so there are things like that you can use to cost save and this comes at around 600 to 800 dollars depending on these factors. Lastly there is the Voron Zero. This is a tiny cute little Corex Y 3D printer. Again it has the traditional Corex Y system so it's a lead screw driven heat pad instead of a 3 axis gantry movement like the Voron 2.4. This is uh, really tiny. It has a 120 by 120 by 120 build volume so uh, so uh, yeah you don't really have much space to work with when it comes to printing parts this is also the cheapest as I said but at the same time in my opinion this is the most difficult warrant to build out there it just the, the way the parts assemble is in a very specific order if you break that or if you skip and inserting a nut into the extrusions because you can't use T nuts with the 15-15 extrusions this uses you have to disassemble a ton of the parts etc and uh, even if you follow the instructions uh, perfectly there are a ton of uh, small areas that your finger or your tools can't reach and uh, yeah it's definitely not an easy build and as a result unlike the rest of the Voron except the 2.4 again I don't recommend this for a first time 3D printer builder as well so uh, yeah definitely be aware of that but uh, if you're willing to take the challenge it's definitely worth it it can print just as well as any other Voron printer and uh, yeah it has no problems with ABS like any of the other Voron printers and uh, yeah as I said it prints great another compromise with the small form factor is this doesn't have a bad probe but uh, you, since the heat bed is really tiny it's not that difficult to manually bed level so uh, yeah it's another compromise but at $400 I think it's definitely worth it and if you're interested in a tiny 3D printer like this, you can definitely build this. Also another thing to note is, you've probably noticed the tool heads on all of the Vorons so far are this design, which is the afterburner. Since the Voron Zero is tiny, it doesn't use the afterburner, it uses a tiny tool head here. Because, well, the afterburner itself is basically the entire print volume of the Voron Zero is. That's how small the Voron Zero is. So. Yeah, it wasn't possible to use this, which means it's also a Bowden driven uh, 3D printer, so be aware of that. I'm personally not a fan of Bowden, but uh, you know, some people don't mind that, and even I have a Boron Zero, so you know, it's not a big deal. It's just a personal preference thing, so yeah, be aware of that. So, uh, yeah, speaking of the afterburner, we're, we're moving on to the extruders now. That's the primary tool head for the Vorons as I said and the extruder is included, extruder part of it is included in all of the Vorons again except Voron Zero and that's the afterburner clockwork so it's a BNG gear based extruder that sits around here you can see the motor for it here and uh, yeah, it's geared, it uses the BNG gears I don't know what to say about extruders to be honest it's great, it works I don't know what else to say about the extruder part of it, not because it's bad, I just don't know what to say. But you do also have a few options. So, uh, for example, there is the Galileo clockwork. And it's a planetary gear based uh, extruder based on the orbiter on the GitHub. So, I forgot to open the space, so let it load and here it is. You can see that it's a planetary gear system. And unlike any of the other of the Voron extruders, it uses 8mm bone tech gears instead of the standard ones, but uh, you know, other than that, it's basically the same idea. I am using the Galileo on my Voron 2.4, and I made a video about that. If you're interested in that, you can click the card on the screen right now, but the summary is I don't really see any tangible benefit for using the Galileo, but 
you know, if you want to, because it's a fun project, to be honest, uh, you can build this and there are some theoretical advantages that I'm not going to get into, I just didn't notice them. Uh, the problem with uh, getting the files for Galileo is it's technically still in development as far as I know, so the files aren't public yet, but uh, they're willing to share it, so you can, what you can do is log into the Discord server, definitely join that if you're building a woman as well, by the way, and just ask in the one of the build help channels and I'm sure someone will DM it to you. Uh, when I see them, I DM to the people as well because it's basically available to everyone, just not finalized. For example, the uh, cable cover, there is not a good picture of it here, but a replacement cable cover on the side, uh, that's not finalized, for example, and things like that. But the extruder itself is out of development, it's finished. When I said it's still in development, I meant small things like that, not the actual extruder. There is the Mobius 4 or M4. So just like I said, they pulled a Microsoft with the naming of the Boron 2.4 and the Boron 1.8. They copied DJI here, so DJI went from uh, Osmo Mobile 3 to OM4, so they did the same and named it M4. I'm kidding, obviously. But uh, yeah, next thing we'll see is probably we'll, they'll copy Apple and we'll get the new Voron or something like that. Or they, they'll copy Nintendo and we'll get new new 3 Voron i XL or something like that. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this is the this is an evolution of the first extruder released by the Voron team, the Mobius. It is, uh, it is again BMG gear driven like the Afterburner, uh, Afterburner Clockwork, sorry. But uh, yeah, it is, a, as I said, a Bowden system and it has 5 to 1 gearing, which is slightly more than the gearing that uh, the Afterburner Clockwork has. And it's a Bowden extruder, as I said. So again, I don't really know what help, what much to say with this. This fits with uh, all Boron printers except the Boron Zero. And then there is the Voron Pocket Watch. Pocket Watch is the extruder that sits in the backside of the Voron Zero. Uh, there is no picture of that, so yeah, I guess I'll show you this. This is my Mobius 4 mode for the Voron Zero. This is not the Pocket Watch, but I'm just showing the location. It fits here, and it's, uh, it pushes filament through the Bowden tube into the hot end, just like any other Bowden, print, uh, Bowden extruder. And uh, it's basically a shrunk down uh, afterburner clockwork, so the extruder on all pretty much all Boron printers. It uses BMG gears again. It's just a shrunk down in a smaller uh, outer shell, and uh, uses a NEMA 14 instead of NEMA 17 because uh, again the rear side of the uh, Boron Zero is not wide by much. So uh, yeah, that's the only way they made it fit. However, that that can have some problems. I don't think most of pe most of the people will encounter them, but this is just my experience. It can have some problems with uh, if you push filament at uh, really high speeds like I do. So I made a Voron M4 mode for the Voron Zero. I'll link this in the description if you're interested. But uh, yeah, it basically replaces the Pocket Watch with the Mobius 4, and you can even still have the rear panel. Not you don't have to do what I did here. You just have to use the pulley that I'll link instead of the printed one, and that's about it. So, uh, yeah, if you have problems with that, you can switch to this, but uh, again, most people don't have any problems with it, so it's just an FYI. So, again, there are great 3D printers and great uh, extruders in the Warren ecosystem. Plus, uh, if you have a creative idea, chances are someone already did it because there is a a wide array of community contributed mods on the Voron users GitHub. You can see that there are a ton of mods here. So uh, yeah, you definitely check this out as well if you think you have a creative idea. Chances are somebody already did it, so you can you can save some time and just download their design. I'll link this in the description as well, along with uh, Voron Design website. So that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you when it comes to choosing the 3D printer to build. If you do decide to build a Voron, definitely join the Voron Discord. There is a really helpful community here uh, with a ton of people on here. Like Currently only 
just online people are over 2,000 people. There are a ton of people on the Discord server, and people are helpful. So, if you have any problems or questions, you can ask for help here. And uh, if you actually end up building a war, definitely get a serial number. It's it's definitely worth it, especially if you're on the Discord server. So yeah, yeah, definitely get a serial number if you end up building one. So as I said, that's it for this video. So I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave me a like down below. Uh, thanks for watching.